evening, everyone. I'm Lindsay Davis. Welcome to ABC News Live Prime, and thanks so much for streaming with us. We have a lot of of news to get to but before we begin for those of you who are just joining us for the first time we'd like to just reiterate our goal here first off to those of you who have decided to cut out cable rest assured you have not cut off your ability to access insightful news our aim here is relatively simple to provide analysis and context to both stories that inform and stories that make you feel we hope to delve a little deeper and linger a little longer on the news that matters most and with that the big story of the day. We are just hours away from voters in New Hampshire casting their ballots in the first in the nation primary. After Friday night's debate, it's been an all out sprint by the 2020 Democratic field to make. And next to the online debate that is raising eyebrows and according to some stirring divisions and anger within the black community. The question, do black immigrants have the same experiences as black Americans who are the descendants of slaves? The debate reignited after Cynthia Erivo was named to play Harriet Tubman, a role that she later received an Oscar nomination for. The controversial group leading the charge, Eidos, or the American Descendants of Slaves, our Steve Osinsami met with its founder. Here are the nominees for performance. When the names of the nominees for Best Actress were read last night at the Academy Awards, Cynthia Erivo was one of them. Cynthia Erivo, Harriet. Stand up, take my people with me. She is only the 11th black actress ever nominated for an Oscar in a leading role, and had she won, would have become only the second black woman to win the award after Halle Berry in 2001. But in the community, whose story she helped tell in this important film, there is a small and unfortunate yeah. cloud that has rained on her performance this entire award season. And it's a question of her blackness. Harriet Tubman. The title role of Harriet Tubman, a challenge for any actress, and a Revo rose to the occasion, paying tribute to the black abolitionists who freed hundreds of slaves and remains one of the most important figures in black American history. God was watching, but my feet was my own, running, bleeding, climbing, nearly drowned, nothing to eat for days and days, man, I made it. But when the film's producers first announced that it was a Revo getting the job, it didn't go over well with many black Americans because a Revo is British. So there's people who took issue with you being from being from England. From, from England and, and, and African. While promoting the film on New York City radio, she took a moment to defend herself with WQHT host Ebro Darden. Well, I think there's a misconception that when you're in the UK, you sort of get to bypass all the awful things that happen to you as a black person, but you don't. On Twitter, the hashtags boycott Harriet and Harriet deserves better found life. You know, obviously there's been a lot of conversation uh, about the fact that she's British, but it's so unfair. The film's black producer addressed the controversy multiple times this award season, including at the Middleburg Film Festival in Virginia last October. You live or die on the shoulders of the actor in the lead role. So she was it, period. Online, a new group of black intellectuals found their voice with this debate. If Harriet was part of your lived experience as an ADOS, you could bring it to that role. They are the American descendants of slavery, or ADOS for short. And they argue that black Americans who are the children of African immigrants have it entirely different than African descendants of slaves. In Atlanta, we met one of the group's founders, Yvette Carnell. Well, there's an expectation that Yvette, Yvette is, is xenophobic and Yvette hates black immigrants, mm -hmm. and that's just not the case. We had she told us that she is Eidos, but says that I am not because my parents immigrated here from Nigeria. I'm, I'm lighter than you. I'm mm -hmm. far lighter than you. But like the, the cost that we bear is because of being brought here as slaves is very different. We got very personal. Just because you have melanin and kinky hair doesn't mean you have the same background and you are tied to that kind of systemic oppression in this country. So yes, you can come from Nigeria, you can come from Ghana. You're kind of the opposite of what we are though. You're the elite where you come from. We're the bottom cast here. We just look alike. It sounds like you're saying that the American part of African American mm. is, more, is more important to African descendants of slaves. I think it's essential because we built the richest country in the world. But we've always been very, very giving and very accepting of black immigrants in this country. We always have. 
But it's a problem when you look at the number of these roles, especially lead roles, which are going to other groups and other people, even though we fought for the opportunity to be in those roles. And we didn't get to school in London. Like, we didn't go from Nigeria to London to different background. You look at Cynthia Erivo, it's not the same as my background. I'm a bottom cast in this country. That's different than what you came from. And so we don't have access to the things and opportunities that we fought for. They think something is deeply wrong when a British actor of Nigerian descent is chosen to play the role of Martin Luther King in Selma, and a British actress plays his wife, Coretta Scott King. They see similar issues with the leading roles in Best Picture winner 12 Years a Slave and the thriller Get Out, which also won an Oscar. Even the dean of black actors, Samuel L. Jackson, is taking sides in the debate. During this interview with New York's Hot 97, he points out that Get Out's Daniel Kaluuya is a Brit of Ugandan descent, and he wonders if a different actor should have played the role of a black American in an interracial relationship. I tend to wonder what would that movie have been with an American brother who really understands that, that in a way, because, I mean, Daniel grew up in a country where, you know, they've been interracial dating for hundred years and they're not just upset with the movies they say that black immigrants and their children are taking seats in american colleges and businesses that are meant for the descendants of slaves and they don't seem to acknowledge that many black people in europe the caribbean and elsewhere can also trace their ancestors back to slavery they point to this 2015 study that shows that black immigrants are more likely than African Americans to earn a better living, have college degrees, and live in two-parent households. Adoses don't believe that these families should benefit from affirmative action. It was never meant for white women. It was never meant for immigrants or just people of color. It was meant for us. Everybody else just kind of shoehorned their way in. Wouldn't you say, though, that that is a big generalization? Mm -hmm. No. No? No. It doesn't feel like a big generalization that someone oh. like who is the children of Liberian parents might be just as black. Just as, as black, them. but what they went through was in Liberia. I'm hard pressed to believe that uh, someone exactly my age, exactly my experience, who's lived in the same exact shoes that I've lived in over these past 49 years would have any different of an external experience well, as a me, black man in America than I Let me break it down do. for you. Let me yeah. break it down for mm -hmm. you. That's the Obama argument, I like to call it. Mm -hmm. Obama said, I, when people see me as a black man, I have a problem getting a cab, too. My life experience is the same. Yeah. Obama also went to a top tier um, school, like it was a private school in, in Hawaii when he was there. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying to you is this, being black, like not being able to get a cab, or, or the police seeing you and saying this is a black man, right? right? You can experience that, but the lineage and the cost of slavery is not in the eyes of a racist, right? So you can say it's the same, but it's not the same in terms of wealth level, is it? It's only the By her definition, I tried to argue that our white photographer who was recording our interview was more black American than I. So Jay, right here, this dude, he, mm -hmm. took, the, he took one of those DNA tests. Mm -hmm. He black. <laughs> right? But the thing about it is, but this is, but, but this is, this is what's crazy is that by your definition, Jay is more black American than I am. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Because I... But see, here's he, the thing. He's but, not, but he's not more black American because he didn't bear the cost because he looks like Jay. At the heart of this black agenda is the hope for reparations, the idea that America owes the descendants of slaves a certain dollar figure for the trauma of their history. Critics of the Eidos movement say it's pure discrimination, that the racism that black Americans experience from redlining to job discrimination happens to all, no matter how they got here. We may have gotten dropped off at different points, but we still are the glue that comes with diaspora. And when we start picking and choosing who is, has more blackness over the other, who has more entitlement over the diaspora than the other, I think that's when we get into a really dangerous narrative and conversation on our community. And so we have to be mindful that we keep focus on that it is color that is the cart of racism. Cynthia Erivo, who's also a Tony winner, argues that her birthplace shouldn't make a difference in what stories she tells on film or stage. She says her job as an actress is to transcend these issues, even if her ancestors have never had to bear the cost or the pain of slavery. Steve Osinsami joins us now live. Steve, 
I don't even know where to begin. I have so many questions here. I mean, it seems like a, a provocative conversation, but it's a divisive and a slippery slope. I mean, so at the end, really, is this all about reparations or is this trying to establish a I've had it worse than you, a, a caste system kind of situation here? I think it's it's part reparations, that's, that's one of the goals. But the other thing is that this group argues that the current measures of success, that when you measure the progress that black Americans have had in this country, that when you include people like myself or people like Barack Obama or Senator Kamala Harris, that when you include those people in the sort of analysis of progress, that you're not getting a real picture of what's happening to the descendants of slaves in this country. But to your point, and I was so glad that you brought this up with her, you said that we're still subject to the same discrimination. So whether or not you're a descendant of slaves, like Barack Obama, for example, he still has a difficult time getting a cab. So I guess I'm still struggling to understand the point. You know, when I walk into a room of, and I walk into a room, 10 people who are looking at me don't realize that I'm from Nigeria, that my parents are from Nigeria. They see a black man in America. And uh, that experience is the same whether you are born in this country or the descendants of slaves or you're the your parents are immigrants from Nigeria. One thing I will, though, admit and give to this argument is growing up in an African family, I had a language, I had food, I had clothing that belongs to my people and a community that I was raised with that does give me and did give me somewhat of an advantage over the African descendants of slaves who were born in this country. Sure. I mean, everybody in all walks of life, in every aspect, has advantages and disadvantages. Uh, it, it's a really interesting conversation that would take much more time than we have allotted for it right now. But I really appreciate you, Steve, for bringing this conversation to us. So thank you. With pleasure. And, and let's turn now to Shireen Mitchell, founder of Stop Online Violence Against Women. Shireen, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. So give us a sense in your estimation of how ADOS is working to, it, it's my understanding that you believe, uh, try to divide the black community. Yes, I mean, there, there are key issues that the um, black community has, and that is about, you know, we were slaves here, but if you're having an argument about where the slave ship dropped uh, us off in different points as if we are not connected to each other, then we are having a different conversation, and that's part of what I think is this uh, debate. Um, the slave ship dropped off in, you know, Puerto Rico and Dominican Republic and other places, but that does not mean that we're not connected to the same aspect of slavery. It, it, critics have raised concerns about the idea of sowing division. It, you know, what are their issues? So, um, in, in America, we're having this argument over what is closer to like unless you're born here that you don't which is which is a which is really unfortunate but there's a conversation about nativism so if you weren't born in america somehow that you are not black enough or not um native enough to be an american um and we've gone through this historically um in different ways uh across the spectrum, which which happened in the civil rights movement. But, like, honestly, you know, the argument between being called Negroes versus being called African American versus being called black, um, which is where we are now, um, is what this debate is about. And the truth is, um, those who um, were born here, those who come here, also have the same stigmas that they have to face. Yeah, in the long run, I mean, I think the struggle is real. No matter where you're coming from, uh, how you got here, again, a, a longer conversation that, that I'd like to have probably off camera at some point. But thank you very much again for your time, Shereen Mitchell. 
Th no, thank you for having me, and I really appreciate it because I know you've been trying to hold the line about the way in which that we're having this conversation about race in this country and also how it affects the vote. And I'm hoping that we have a broader conversation about the way in which this impacts um, voter suppression and digital voter suppression because this is this is a target on um, the way we vote in this country. Certainly, voter suppression big issue as well. Thank you again. Uh, we're going to take a quick break, but when we come back. Back, uh, the other worldly discovery at NASA, a new planet spotted by a rather unlikely scientist.